What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Rich, back to bring you your NFL props for week nine. We have a loaded slate, a lot of teams on by, but it's getting late. It's almost 9.30 Eastern time, so don't want to waste too much time. Just wanted to make sure that you guys make sure to drop me a like and subscribe for future content. Obviously, these picks are free. If you like them, tail them. If you don't, you don't have to. It's okay. We won't say anything. We won't hate you. We'll still put up the picks. NFL, NBA, we try to give you our process and the best picks possible if you succeed on price picks. Make sure you use promo code WAKEUP for a 100% deposit match up to $100. So let's not waste any more time. Got everything out of the way. Let's get into the picks. So we're starting right off the bat with Deontay Foreman up against Cincinnati Bengals. I know what you're thinking. Deontay Foreman? I don't know, man. 100 yards in the past two games, and one of those is including a game in which Chuba Hubbard was active. I really like Deontay Foreman to go over 70 yards today. The Bengals early in the season were kind of this stalwart on defense, especially when it came to stopping the run. But more recently, they haven't been as good. They've been allowing about 118 yards per game. Deontay Foreman should be the bell cow. Chuba Hubbard has already been ruled out. Whether you like Chuba or whether you like Deontay Foreman to go over 70 and a half rushing yards or even the 16 and a half rush attempts, don't hate that either. Dude had 20. 26 carries last game, which is absurd, uh, but I really do like him to go with rushing yards today. I think that may be the better bet. I just, again, at the end of the day, I think that he can go over with a big play. He's been showing that, you know, regardless of where he was in the past with the Achilles injury and all these things, he's back and playing at a very high level. I think we should be rolling with Deontay Foreman today. I think he's in a really good spot to go over. Now, another guy that I really like today is actually Travis Etienne. And ETN is just poised for a massive game. You see the way his rushing yards have been going up and up and up. They're up against Las Vegas today. Las Vegas on defense. Ain't much to see there as far as I'm concerned. Now they've gotten rid of James Robinson. Travis Etienne has been killing it. So I do like him a lot to go over. You just see the trajectory that this guy is on. It seems like every time he touches the field, he is ready to make a big play, whether it's a 40-yard play, a 50-yard play. Vegas has shown that they haven't done a very good job stopping the running back. We saw what Alvin Kamara did to them last week in the receiving game. I think that whether you want to take the rushing yards 80 and a half or you want to take the rushing plus receiving, which is up all the way at 140 four and a half I like both numbers I think whether he does it through the air or on the ground he will be successful as you can see he's actually hit this one in four straight he's hit the rushing yards in three straight I think both are great numbers whichever way you want to attack this Vegas Raiders defense I think he will probably go over in this one now the next guy I'm looking at is kind of you know not too many people want to talk about him because he's a backup running back but let's talk about Khalil Herbert real quick Khalil Herbert over 40 and a half rushing yards you see what he's been doing 75 yards, 62 yards, 99 yards, and against good defenses, like Dallas's defense is good, New England's defense, eh, they've been all right, Washington defense isn't that great, but the bigger thing here is he's splitting carries, he's not even the primary running back, but the big, but the real important point to mention is while he is splitting carries, he is still getting, you know, 12 to 15 carries a game, and that's the reason why I do like Khalil Herbert in this one, you know, go over 40 and a half rushing yards, not really a big feat for him, for a guy who's been putting up 60, 75, 90, like almost 100 yards. Going over 40 and a half is very doable up against the Miami Dolphins defense, which for better or worse, hasn't been great at stopping the run. Now they do get Bradley Chubb back, so we'll see there. I do think it will be a slightly closer game than people are anticipating. The big issue is can Chicago stop the run on the other side? You know, losing Roquan Smith and Robert Quinn isn't going to be easy to, you know, obviously uh, fix these guys on defense. They could be bad, right? And, you know, while we still project them to be fine and we're still, you know, the Bears do have a decent defense, it will be tough playing without Roquan Smith in this one. I do kind of like Jalen Waddle as well and we will get him to we will get into him in a little bit but I think that Khalil Herbert is poised to go over you know he's been a guy who's right around the four yard to carry mark sometimes even higher in some of those games so he's very explosive he can do it through the air or on the ground I like him to do it on the ground 40 and a half is a fine number you know on the books it's kind of around the same uh, MGM has it the best number but I think it's one that could move up to 41 and a half by the time kickoff comes I just think people like Khalil Herbert and the the stigma around him being a backup running back it's just not fair he's been running better than David Montgomery has and he's the backup running back. I think he probably deserves more carries than he's been getting, but Demont does his thing out there. He still, you know, has his role in the offense. The Bears aren't going to abandon the run. They run the ball at one of the highest rates in the NFL because Justin Fields also runs the ball. I think Kaluber is poised to have a good game against the Miami Dolphins today. Now, the one that I don't know if this one's on prize picks, but let me see if it is really quickly. Let me go old Chase. Chase Claypool. All right, so Chase Claypool, now obviously on the Bears, 
he's supposed to get limited action today. How many snaps does he get? We don't know. But I am taking a flyer on Chase Claypool. I don't think you trade a second round pick for a guy and not use him in his first game, especially when we've already been told he will be active. Again, I'm not suggesting this one. It's more of a fun play that I liked, but 25 and a half is reasonable. It's about two catches for a guy like Chase Claypool who averages somewhere around 13 to 15 yards per reception on his career. This year, it is down a little bit. You know, the four straight doesn't really matter because he's changing teams and will be on limited snaps. 25 and a half, very reasonable. If you like it on FanDuel, it's 23 and a half. But I wouldn't go too hard at it, wouldn't go all in on it, but I do, I am very intrigued by Claypool because it only takes one play. We've seen them try and take deep shots down the field to receivers and they just haven't been able to convert. I think if you tell Chase Claypool to go run a go route, I think he can do that in a game three or four times and Justin Fields can throw one up to him and he can make a play. So again, I'm not saying you got to play it, but I kind of like it. So let's get into one that I like a little bit more than Chase Claypool and talking about Robert Tanyan the tight end for the Green Bay Packers. Now we're in this one at 31 and a half. It's 30 and a half on some books. So just be mindful of that. But I still really like it a lot. The big thing for me with Tanyan and the reason why I really like him is because he is literally the only guy that Aaron Rodgers can really trust. We can talk about Robio Dobbs. We can talk about Alan Lazard. But I think that Robert Tanyan really is the guy that gets this offense going. Now, you know, he's not been super consistent, but he's been right around this number every, every game. And now they play the Lions this week. As much as I love the Lions, they play in the games that, one, go over a lot, have very high totals, and the Green Bay Packers offense is awful right now. Could they run the ball with AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones and just run the heck out of it? Absolutely. But I think the other thing to point out is that the Detroit Lions have been putting up points. And so there is a world, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but there is a world where Detroit gets up on Green Bay early. Green Bay's defense has not been very good. And does that mean they're going to you know, necessarily be bad against the Lions? Not necessarily. But I think that there's a world where Detroit does get up on them early and they have to kind of pass the ball a little bit. Last game, they were down to the Bills. They kept running the ball. And yes, it worked, but they were never really in that game. So it's like, if Detroit's going to play them like that, we'll see. But, you know, the thing with Detroit, they do play a lot of man coverage. And so if you're playing man coverage against Romeo Dobbs, who's not very good at man coverage, Alan Lazard, we'll see. He's decent at man coverage. Tanyan is the guy who can really exploit man coverage. And I think that's the reason why I like him a lot. You see of all these teams, Buffalo, Washington, the Jets, Giants, and Patriots, the Jets play a lot of man coverage because they have great corners. But the exploitation is when you have these big body guys like tight ends, like Robert Tanyan, he's a guy who can go over. So I really do like Tanyan over his receiving yards. I think he's in a great spot to go over today versus the awful Detroit Lions. And the last guy that I do like quite a bit is Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, unstoppable. Like, unstoppable. Up against the Chicago Bears defense today, which we'll see how the Dolphins play. Um, same Similar situation. The Bears do get run on a ton. I believe they're second in carries per game, only behind the Houston Texans, as far as what they allow on defense, like 27, 28 carries a game. So we could see a lot of Raheem Mostert and probably some Jeff Wilson on top of that. But at the end of the day, I think Miami's going to throw the ball. They've been throwing the ball all season. They've been trying to you know, break records with Tyreek Hill on pace for over 2,000 yards. Jalen Waddle going over this number in three straight games. You know, Detroit, Pittsburgh, bad you want to talk about bad bad but i mean you look at what they're what the chicago bears are doing they're not much better they're not playing much better on defense they're, they allowed what 45 points to dallas last week a lot of it was to tony pollard but they still got it done through the air and i think that Jalen waddle can go over this number he's a big play threat just like tyree kill is and with how much attention tyree kill needs it opens up things for Jalen waddle so i do like Jalen waddle to go over 68 and a half in this one those are the kind of picks I'm looking at today. As you can see, we kind of go through it one more time. Deontay Foreman, over 70 and a half rushing yards. Travis Etienne, more than 80 and a half rushing yards. Or if you want to take the 104 and a half rushing close receiving, don't mind that. Khalil Herbert, more than 40 and a half rushing yards. Robert Tunyon, more than 31 and a half receiving yards. And Jalen Waddle, more than 68 and a half receiving yards. As always, if you tail, give them hell. And if we fail, do not bail. We'll be back with more NFL picks, NBA picks, and we'll see you guys later. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. See you in the next video. I'm out. Peace.